Okay, it has dawned on me the challenge that I am accepting to study a whole bunch of Japanese for a test that I'm gonna take pretty soon at a language school in Japan. And I procrastinated super, super hard. Basically, the test is gonna be surrounded, the topic is around like N5, N4 level. So I'm basically trying to study up to N4 and my prior experience has been just Japanese in high school and 400 days of Duolingo five minute practices, essentially. So it's a lot. And I've been listening to a lot of Pimsleur, at least like two to three lessons a day. And yeah, I think today I just, it, it really did just hit me that I only have about 24 days before that test. So <laughs> I don't know. It's like interesting because I've been out of school for so long and I haven't really procrastinated necessarily in a long time, but this feeling feels very, very familiar. And I just wanted to reflect on how this ended up happening a little bit. So I told myself that I would study starting November, but somehow November just slipped right by and I'm still in kind of disbelief that it is December right now. I feel like this has happened multiple times in the past years, me just realizing it's December randomly. And I recently started a 30 day challenge, which is basically no like media consumption. So I'm not watching any YouTube, not watching any like Netflix anime or anything at all. The only things I can do is if I need to like fix my sink or something, I can watch a YouTube tutorial. So basically information that I need at this very moment, I can look it up. But for the most part, avoid everything. No podcasts, no books, no audiobooks, nothing. So I've been doing that for about six days and it's been going strong and going well. It's very enlightening, I'd say. I, I love it a lot. I feel like I am the most me when I'm in this state. I feel like every time I sit down and eat and then like watch something else or watch something in general like YouTube or something else, then at that stage, I'm shutting down my brain to the point where like I'm almost deactivating my own brain my own thoughts. And I have recognized this before where when I'm thinking about something and I feel like I'm on a roll, like I'm really, really analyzing and thinking about something deeply. And then I'm like, oh, it's lunchtime though. I gotta go eat lunch. And then I put something on like anime and then all those deep thoughts are gone. It's, it's very obvious that that's happening, but I keep letting it happen. And I think it's very just habitual to this point where I continuously do that. And that's sort of what happened with Japanese, I'd say, in terms of me procrastinating this much, is that my habits from before didn't really allow the space for me to introduce a whole, a whole new thing for me to have to like study and get into. Cause I'm trying to carve out about two hours in a day just to study Japanese. And I kind of have to do that now if I actually really want to pass that test to get into the intermediate class. The reason I wanted to pass that test is because there's two classes. One is the intermediate one, which is in the morning. And then the beginner one is in the afternoon. So I'm going to be in Japan studying Japanese in a language school for three months and if I were to get a, if I don't pass, then I have to be in the beginner class, which is in the afternoon. And I much rather have it in the morning so I can just do whatever I want for the rest of the day in Japan. So I do feel like a lot is riding on this, at least, at least in my head it is a, a big thing. So I should really, I am really getting into it and I'm gonna try my hardest. Probably the hardest I'm gonna try for any sort of studying or learning in a long time. So, and I, I think the pressure of like a test and a pressure of making something really big in your head also really helps, at least for me, I'm the type of person who performs quite well when I pr procrastinate. I used to do it a lot in college where me and my roommates, I, I majored in physics in college. Me and my roommates would just study the whole night, sleep for two to three hours, then take the test. And those are fun days, but, and we would play like a game of Yu-Gi-Oh right, right before we slept too. <laughs> that would last like 30 minutes to an hour. So we, we were definitely self-sabotaging ourselves, but I still passed I, and I got good grades, higher than 3.5. I graduated in three years. So I graduated one, graduated one year early. So I still managed to do all of that. So that's why I feel like I'm the type of person who performs quite well under pressure. So it's, it's a nice feeling. Nice in some senses, stressful in others, but it's kind of refreshing to feel this again. Since I've been out of school for so long, it's, I have not felt something like this in a while. And video stuff, I do feel like there are deadlines and whatnot, but like there aren't too many consequences you can feel 
when you don't release something on time or when, at least for me, like I'm not taking YouTube as my like main thing or my job. So for me, I don't feel those consequences. And back then I did though. So I, I know how it felt back then, but it's been a while since I've treated it that way. But the, so that's essentially what happened is I let myself get too distracted and didn't put in and didn't carve the time out that Japanese deserved early enough. So once I completely stopped watching things, no media, once I started this big internet, not internet fast, but just like clearing things out, clearing the dis distractions. That's when I started feeling like I finally had time to actually practice Japanese. And now I'm realizing that it might be too late. So yeah, this should be interesting. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the lesson I'm learning is I really just gotta, I know I can't keep this up forever. It is a 30 day challenge, but for the most part, I'm gonna try my best to limit it like to the smallest amount possible where I can still, cause I still do want to like watch certain things cause I'm interested in, in media. And a lot of media has influenced me in a lot of positive ways as well. So it's not all bad. It's just, there are points in my life and times where I feel like I should really be focused up and that's when I should cut it out. So it's a balance that I still need to figure out for the future. But for the time being, I think I really can do this for at least 30 days and I'm sure I will do it for more once I'm in Japan. There's like no reason to like sit down and watch anime when I'm in Japan, like I'm going, I'm pretty much on my own adventures then. So yeah, that's, that's just the update right now. Just to give a few fun facts for the day because I, I, I think these were pretty nice highlights from the day. Number one, the first chapter of Genki that I'm going through right now, it's, it has a lot to do with numbers. And I think one of the most effective ways to practice numbers, even though this is not a part of Genki, this is just me remembering like Chinese school or just any other language learning for numbers, just count from like one to 100 and beyond. Just keep counting over and over again and the numbers will flow better in your head. That's what I'm doing and I feel like I can say the numbers much faster. It's it's like I can visually see the like characters, the English characters, not the alphabet, but like the numbers. And then my head, I, I just did 67. So Rokuju Nana is 67 in Japanese, but it takes time. It took more time for me to process that back then than it does now after I just kept saying the numbers over and over again from one to like 100. So that's a good technique that is kind of obvious, but at the same time, the, the book doesn't tell you to do it. I just did it in the shower and I found myself like saying it much faster afterwards. And then the second highlight of today was I made a tutorial for GoPro footage using ChatGBT to help me. I basically, so GoPro has a thing where they have a naming convention that's really kind of dumb. They have the name and then like a number and then another number after that. So it, the number is like, okay, 200, right? So this is video 200. And then the next one will be video 201, video 202. But then the thing is, if you recorded your GoPro footage for like longer than a certain amount of time, like four gigabytes, which is usually around like 10 to 15 minutes, you have the number 200 with one in the beginning. So it's like, a oh, one is the first number, then 200. Then there's like somewhere down the line two and then 200 again. And then somewhere down the line, even further, if you took a lot of GoPro footage, there's three and then like 200 again. So it's like all out of order basically. And if you try to sort it by date in a Mac, it just doesn't work. And so it's very, very much a hassle to edit in Premiere Pro. So I wrote a script in, or I didn't write the script, ChatGPT wrote the script. I just told GPT what to do and I was like hoping that it wouldn't take much time and I'm super glad it didn't. It took like, I think 20 minutes in total to generate the script, test it out and have it work. So that was like one of the most, one of the coolest uses of ChatGPT I've done so far. I've, I've used it for other things that I felt were great too, but it took much longer. So this one felt satisfying really quickly and it's crazy how far it's come. So that was another highlight that I just wanted to mention. But that's basically it for today. Yeah, lots of things to do. And I feel like every moment sort of counts um, from here on. So I'm, I'm definitely going to get things going. And this weekend is a lot of socializing with friends and stuff. So, so definitely need to not procrastinate again. Okay, peace out.